All right, so in this video, we're going to start looking at the individual muscles in the muscular system. <clears throat> and so basically what these next three videos are going to be like is just naming some of the major muscles. Your responsibility for them is to know, to recognize their name, obviously, to know kind of what their job is and where they're generally located in the body. You're not going to be having to, to label them per se, but you would need to know that, you know, if I say something is for chewing, then obviously it's found in the head. And so that's the kind of general idea that I'm looking for here. Speaking of the head, here's a picture of the head. And uh, so we're going to look at some head muscles and talk about most of them, but not, um, or talk about generally a lot of them, but only name a few of them. And so um, most of the muscles on the face are for facial expression. And what's interesting about them is that they don't insert into bone. The moving part, remember that technical insertion is not the bone, but actually the skin, because that is what they are moving. And so facial muscles insert into the skin because they move the skin and they're very important for uh, nonverbal communication. There are muscles on the scalp and on the face that do this. We're not going to name any of them. So you don't have to know the individual muscles other than just understanding that generally that facial muscles are for nonverbal communication. As you can see, there are lots of them there and it's just too much for, for us. As far as chewing is concerned, the technical term for chewing is called mastication. And the muscles that are used in mastication or chewing are the prime movers are the temporalis and the masseter you see there. And they just literally close the jaw. You can see here if this one flexes or if this one contracts, it's going to pull the jaw up. Same here. And so those are the prime movers. The grinding motions of the jaw, so like if you're chewing on something and your mouth is moving side to side to grind, that's these pterygoids. You don't need to know the difference between lateral and medial, just know pterygoid is for grinding. And this other muscle here, the bucinator, is also for chewing as well. And then there are a set of muscles that promote tongue movements. And that's these three highlighted muscles down here, the genio, stylo, and hyloglossus. Glossus means tongue. And these hylo, stylo, and genio just has to do with where it's connected to. And so I would just remember them as a group of muscles that deal with movements of the tongue. So looking at the neck and throat area now, we're going to primarily look deal with muscles that have to do with swallowing one of the big muscles here on the neck is called the sternoclimastoid you see it here sternoclimastoid it has it's these big muscles here that divides the neck kind of into these two triangle there's one over here too obviously and then of course the tongue is part of that swallowing the bucinator again has to do with swallowing, pushes the food back toward the pharynx. Pharynx is an area inside your, uh, behind your nose and mouth. And the muscles there start to push the food down and complete the swallowing process. There's another area back here that you can't really see called the epiglottis. And the epiglottis isn't a muscle, it's a covering. And it closes over the larynx. And then once it closes, that those muscles push the food down into the stomach and those the esophagus and the stomach and all those hollow organs are lined with smooth muscle so there's no skeletal muscles that are involved with that so the big ones here the sternoclimastoid bucinator and then of course the tongue itself are very involved in swallowing you have all these muscles here that are connected to the hyoid and remember we talked about the hyoid bone being an important muscle for swallowing as well but we're not going to learn all these muscles as you can see, the muscle system can go really deep, really fast. So we're just going to kind of hit the high points. 
When it comes to breathing, there are a couple of major muscles that we're going to look at. Uh, the, of course, the big one is the diaphragm. There's two phases of breathing. There's inhaling and exhaling. When it comes to inhaling, what happens is the muscles of the diaphragm and the muscles of these external costals here, wrong one, external costals, um, will contract, and that causes the the rib cage to enlarge. So the ribs are actually moving as well and causes this cavity to enlarge, thus drawing air in. And then when those muscles relax, the diaphragm and then the internal costals will contract and this causes you to exhale. And so diaphragm is involved in both and then the internal costals in expiration and the external costals in inhalation. All right, so looking at the muscles of the abdominal region, there are several, and these muscles are noted by the direction that their muscle fibers go, which you can pretty plainly see here on this picture. You have <clears throat> the rectus abdominis. This is what most people think of, like, you know, six-pack abs or whatever right up here, and these are just going up and down from superior to inferior. And then the obliques, you have two sets of obliques. You have the internal obliques and the external obliques. And notice how they are parallel or perpendicular to one another, but they go in these diagonal ways. And I think I have another picture here. Yeah, you can really see it here. The externals go down toward the middle and the internals go down away from the middle. And so they're just used for twisting the, the body. The rectus abdominis, of course, is used for sitting up. And then you have the transversus here, which transverse means just going across. And so these run kind of perpendicular to the floor or parallel to the floor, if you want to think of it that way. And they are also used for twisting the body as well. And another thing that these muscles are used for when we, I mean, just normal bodily functions, like using the restroom, um, even things like uh, throwing up and coughing, these involuntary kinds of functions that the body uses to get rid of things that could possibly be bad for us. These muscles are vital for propelling, you know, air or whatever it is out of us. Uh, even something like screaming. The, the abdominal muscles are used for that. Screaming is a, a mechanism that is used to call others' attention to ourselves to need for need of help or whatever. It's kind of a, an age-old thing. Now people use it for other reasons, but it's, it's, an, it's a mechanism for alerting others. You know, you think about it in the animal kingdom and our own, and so screaming is an important part of keeping us alive. And so those muscles are used also for that.